Today, we're going over the three best iOS and Android budgeting apps for 2023 and beyond. Each of these apps can help you thrive financially by potentially saving you thousands of dollars thanks to the excellent budgeting features, the extra money saving features like bill and subscription trackers, and really just the ability to see your entire financial picture in one easy to view place. Hey, my name is Ryan, and by the time you leave this video, you'll know with confidence which of these three budgeting apps is right for your situation, because I'm going to show you firsthand how the budgeting and money saving features work by jumping into my iPhone and throwing a screen recording up here. That way you don't have to sign up for a bunch of different apps, go through, through the ordeal of deleting accounts, from this video, you can see what you like and just sign up for one. Each of these apps offer unique features and different experiences, so there is something for everyone. And towards the end of the video, we're gonna talk about important safety and security information that you need to be aware of before signing up and linking your accounts. So make sure to stay around through the entire video. I also quickly wanna say thank you to this video. Hang on, I'm getting a call. Hello? Oh, there's no video sponsor? Got it. That's right, there is no sponsor for this video, so please, before leaving a rude and assuming comment, understand that I chose each of these apps based solely on the features that they offer and how valuable they are to you and I. So that said, let's jump into the first budgeting app on my list and see what it has to offer. The first app on my list for the best of 2023 is Intuit Mint. Mint is a powerhouse of a personal finance and budgeting platform thanks to the excellent mobile app, the fully featured web platform, and the huge variety of money saving features like a bill and subscription tracker, the ability to gamify your savings through saving goals, and features like a spend, income, and cash flow analyzer, plus the completely customizable budgeting experience. But even better, all of those features are completely free. So let's jump into the Mint app on my iPhone so I can show you how they work first Hand. By the way, for privacy reasons, I've only linked a few of my banking and investment accounts. That way I can still give you an example of the budgeting and money saving features. But keep in mind when you see like the spend analyzer, it'll look like I have no income, but I do have expenses. That's because I haven't linked my main checking account where I do get paid. Inside the Mint app, you'll land on the overview tab where you'll have a snapshot of your entire financial picture across each of your linked accounts. So as you can see, I have a list of my cash, credit card, loan, and investment account balances, which is really great because I don't know about you, but I have 12 credit cards. So sometimes when I just want to check in on how I'm doing without going to make a credit card payment, uh, it's nice to see all of those linked accounts in one easy to view place. Towards the top of the screen, you'll also see a historical trend of those balances plus a net worth tracker. Now, before we take a look at the budgeting features, when you first get started on Mint, what you'll do is link your bank accounts and then your transaction and balance data will automatically sync into the app. And from then on, it will update in real time. So scrolling down, you'll see a complete list of transactions across all of your linked accounts. This is really helpful because maybe you made a purchase six months ago that you now need to pull up, but maybe also you have 12 credit cards so you don't know which account you made the purchase with. Well, with Mint, you can easily search for that transaction and filter by all transactions to easily find it. Mint also provides a ton of flexibility in controlling transactions through options like custom tags. So if you were going on vacation to Hawaii this year and you want to further organize your finances, you can create a tag named Hawaii trip 2023 and tag each of the transactions you make during that trip with that custom tag you set up. Other than that, you can still further organize your finances by creating specific rules, adding notes, or hiding specific transactions from your overall uh, budgets and insights if your situation calls for that. One of my favorites though is the ability to split transactions. So for example, I spent $60 at Whole Foods the other day, 50 of which was a gift card for someone and 10 was for groceries. I wanted to separate 
that transaction into two categories. I was easily able to do that, put the 50 into my gifts budget and the 10 into my groceries budget. Jumping over to the monthly tab, this is where you'll go to create and manage your budget, see upcoming bills and subscriptions, track progress toward your saving goals, which we'll cover in a second. That's a really cool feature, as well as see your money trends and insights. So I've set up an example budget for January here. I've entered my expected income and created budget categories for each of the expenses I expect to have this month. By far, one of my favorite features about Mint is how personalized you can get with the customized budgeting experience. You can choose from a main list of budget categories when creating or editing your budget, but you can create an unlimited number of customized budget subcategories so you can get even more specific with where you spend money. As an example, let's go ahead and add a customized category so I can show you how it affects your overall budget. Let's say that I spend a ridiculous amount of money on a watermelon every month. So I wanna separate that into its own category away from my main grocery category. To add a new category, what I'm gonna do is click the plus icon in the top right of the screen, scroll down until I find the food and dining category, hit add a subcategory, I'll name this watermelon, add subcategory. I'll then click on that new budget. And then let's say that I wanna spend $1,000 every month on this addiction. Now heading back out to our main budget, you can see the newly added category there. We haven't spent any money here yet, but baby, believe me, we're, we're gonna be spending money here soon. But as you can see from the other categories, it'll tell you exactly how much money you've spent so far as well as how much money you have left to spend. Let's take a look at some of the other valuable features on Mint that make this a great experience. So scrolling down on the monthly tab, you'll see a breakdown and historical trend of your overall cash flow, income, and spending over the past six months. You'll see spending broken down by category and the ability to create spending targets, which is a pretty cool feature. Mint lets you set up an action plan for reducing your spend by specific category. So if you know you need to cut back somewhere, Mint will help you set a target spend amount and then you can track your progress week over week. This is what I meant when I said that you can gamify the savings process because being able to kind of beat your last week's spend is kind of fun. The next couple of features include a bill and subscription tracker, which is simple, but insanely valuable. We've all been there when we signed up for a subscription a year ago, forgot about it, and it continuously pulls, say like $10 out of our account without us realizing it. Well, when you hop into Mint and you see a list of all of your subscriptions, you can easily say, hey, I haven't used that service in a while. Let me go ahead and cancel that and now save $10 a month. Another extra money saving feature that Mint provides, which I find really valuable, is customizable saving goals, which is another way to gamify the savings process. How this works is that you set up a custom goal and then you actually link that goal to a directly linked bank account. And as you contribute to that account, whether that's a savings, investments, or checking account, your goal progress will update real time inside the Mint app. A few of the other features offered by Mint include access to your TransUnion Vantage score credit score. You can set notifications for things like high spending, overspending, or credit score changes. You can take advantage of a subscription cancellation service as part of premium, which we'll talk about in just a second. And then you can also use a bill negotiation service, which if they manage to lower your bills, they take a flat fee of the savings. So there are three subscription levels on Mint, Classic, which is free, that includes everything we just went over, ad free for 99 cents per month, and premium for 4.99 per month. Premium includes extra features like that subscription cancellation service and additional money trends and insights. That said, Mint has one of the simplest budgeting experiences out of the three apps we're covering in this video, as you cannot plan your monthly budgets ahead of time. Even though the categories that you create this month automatically show up for the next month, you can't plan ahead if you know your finances are going to look different next month compared to this month. This is a problem if you're someone who likes to get a head start on your budgets. The next app on my list for the best budgeting apps for 2023 is Every Dollar. This app takes a completely different approach to budgeting as it follows what's called the zero-based strategy. 
This is my favorite approach to budgeting because it ensures that you know where every single available dollar is going before you even start the month. Even better though, you not only get to create an unlimited number of budget subcategories, but you get to plan your budgets up to a year and a half in advance. Jumping into the Every Dollar app, you'll first land on the budget tab. Now there are two versions of Every Dollar, including a free and premium version. In this video, we're gonna be covering the free version, but I will point out features that are available as part of premium as we go through the video. First, it's important to understand that the free version doesn't allow you to link your bank accounts directly, meaning that you'll need to manually update transaction and balance data in the app. Now, this is a lot more effort than an app like Mint, where you can directly link your account on the free version, and all of that information automatically syncs up into the app. For those looking to save time by directly linking your bank accounts so you don't have to manually record transaction and balance data. You can either go with Mint, which allows you to connect your accounts for free. You can pay for every dollar premium or which what I'd recommend if you are open to paying for a budgeting app is waiting for the third app on this list because your money does go a lot further with the features over there compared to what every dollar premium has to offer. That said, let's create an example budget inside every dollar. So the first step that you'll need to take is to enter your expected income for the month and then we'll get into our expenses. Now, every dollar provides default categories and subcategories. However, you can edit, delete these or add new ones if you'd like. For the income section, let's go with the default here and say that you're paid bi-weekly and you earn a total of $5,000 per month. So we'll leave paycheck one and paycheck two here. But let's go ahead and click on paycheck one and say that you earn an even $2,500 in that paycheck. So you'll see the blue shaded text. That is the amount you expect to receive. Well, the green shaded text to the left of that is what you've actually already received. For this example, let's say that you got paid on Friday, January 13th, meaning we already passed that date. Today is the 20th, the day that I'm filming this. So we've already received that paycheck. What we now need to do is click the plus icon in the bottom right corner and add our income transaction. So I'll change the date to January 13th, enter 2,500 for the amount. Now that we've added that transaction, you'll see that the green text now says $2,500 received of 2,500. So this income budget is good to go. Now let's go back to our main category and edit paycheck two. Now, again, because we're earning $5,000 for the month, this is also gonna be an even 2,500, but because our next paycheck is January 27th, we're not gonna enter a transaction just yet, but when you do get paid, you'd come in here, add this transaction, and do the exact thing we just did for the last number one paycheck. Back out on the main budget tab, towards the top of the screen, you'll see that we have $5,000 left to budget. Now this is where the main difference between the zero based budgeting strategy comes in versus budgeting on apps like Intuit Mint. Our goal now is to assign every available dollar to expenses, investments, savings. We want to make this number a big old zero and give every single dollar a job. I'm going to go ahead and fill out the rest of this budget so you can see exactly what it looks like when your budget is complete and every dollar is assigned a job. Now that I've completed the budget, you can see here all the different categories I've created and I got rid of some of the default ones. But towards the top of the screen, you'll see that it says it's an every dollar budget, which means that every available dollar has been assigned a job, whether again, that's expenses, investments, savings, or whatever else. Now, you'll notice there is the plan tab, spend tab, and remaining tab towards the top of the screen. We've just been working on the plan tab, planning for this month. But if we go to the spend tab, we can see exactly how much we have spent so far total this month or by each category. And the remaining tab lets us know exactly how much we have left to spend total as well as by each category we've created. Over on the insights tab, everything you see here is only part of premium. But if you do pay for premium, you'll get a breakdown of your spending by category, uh, your monthly income, and your income versus spending at a glance. Every dollar is super simple and has a very few features, but that's exactly why I added it to this list. If you don't want an experience like Mint where, these, where there's all these extra features, but rather you just want a super customer 
customizable budget experience that's simple and effective, this is probably the way to go for you, but even more so if you'd rather not link your bank accounts directly to a third party app and you want to update the transaction and balance data yourself. Every dollar premium is $79.99 per year or $12.99 a month. But if you'd consider upgrading to a premium budgeting app experience, I would hold off until you see the third budgeting app on my list because I think if you're gonna go the premium route, this app offers more bang for your buck. And the third app on my list for the best budget apps of 2023 goes to YNAB, otherwise known as You Need a Budget. Like every dollar, YNAB focuses almost exclusively on the budgeting experience, also taking the zero-based approach. The difference though is that YNAB is designed in a much more user-friendly way, and there are a ton of educational resources, not only for setting up and managing a budget, but personal finance in general. That said though, it does come at a cost. YNAB has one subscription level coming in at $14.99 per month or $98.99 annually, but there is a 34 day free trial. So you have plenty of time to see if the app actually saves you money. Jumping into the YNAB app, you'll first land on the budget tab. So for this example, we're going to say that today is February 1st. And like the every dollar example, we're going to say that you make an even after tax income of $5,000 per month and you're paid bi-weekly. For February, this is gonna fall on the 10th and the 24th. Taking a look at the partial budget I've set up here, you'll notice a couple of things. First, it says that there is $900 ready to assign across the categories that I've set up here. Now, because YNAB follows the zero-based approach to budgeting, remember, we need to assign every available dollar across our categories. The second thing that you'll likely notice is that there's different colored bubbles across the budget. What do these mean? Each different color bubble indicates a different status for your budget. So a gray bubble represents two things. First, it means that you've set up a category that you want to budget for, but you haven't yet set a target spend amount for the month. It also indicates that that budget category has been completely fulfilled, meaning you've created the budget category, you've set the target spend amount, and you've assigned funds to that category, but also you've spent money on expenses that fall into that category, and you've added those transactions manually into YNAB, or they imported automatically over from your linked account. A yellow bubble indicates that you've set up a budget category, you've set a target spend amount, but you haven't yet assigned funds to that category or you partially assign funds but you haven't met your target yet. A green bubble means that you've set up a budget category, you've set a target spend amount for a specific time frame, and you've assigned all of the funds to that category, meaning that whenever that expense comes up, you're ready and prepared because you know you have enough money to cover that expense. And the last bubble color you'll see is a red one. This means it needs your attention because you've overspent available funds. So if you're a little bit confused at this point, don't worry. Let's go ahead and set up a few example budget categories so I can show you exactly how this entire process works. For the first budget, let's say that you go grocery shopping every week on Wednesday and you typically spend about $100. To add a new category or edit the existing ones, hit the pen icon in the top right of the screen. We'll scroll down to frequent and to add a new subcategory, you'll hit the plus icon to the right of the main category name. So for this, we're gonna enter groceries and for the amount, I'll enter 100. And when scheduling your target spend amount, YNAB lets you choose this based on a weekly or monthly basis, as well as by a specific date in the future. So I'm gonna click weekly here and click by every Wednesday hit save target. And as you can see, that groceries category is now under the frequent tab. And you'll notice that because we did set a target spend amount, there is a yellow bubble there. I'm going to add in two more categories here. The first one being a $450 car payment due on the sixth of the month. And for the second one, we're gonna say that you have a $70 cell phone bill due on the ninth. Now that those are added, it's important to understand which bills have a due date before we receive our next paycheck. So we have enough money to assign to those categories because remember, we can only assign physically available dollars. We can't use money that we haven't received yet in the future just because we're expecting it in the next paycheck. Now, what you could do is manually go through each of the budget categories you've set up and assign money to them based on the expense date. But actually, YNAB offers a really cool tool which will auto assign funds 
to the categories based on the date of the expense that you added in. To do this, we're gonna hit assign funds at the top of the screen, click auto assign by, click under funded, and at this point, YNAB will partially fund the most important categories first, because again, we only have $900 physically available to distribute across the budget. And as you can see, YNAB has assigned funds across the most time sensitive categories that I've added into my budget here. So that car payment due on the sixth is covered, our cell phone bill is covered, electric bill is covered, and the first two and a half weeks of our grocery allocation is covered. So then when you do receive your first paycheck of the month on the 10th, you can then prioritize which bills and expenses you're gonna have before receiving your next paycheck on the 24th. And the same thing thereafter, you can then plan on how much money you wanna carry through until the next paycheck of the next month, as well as cover all of the expenses between those dates. Now, outside of those simple budget categories that I just shared with you, YNAB also lets you optimize for expenses that fall out of your typical month to month like a grocery bill. So for example, if you prepay your auto insurance every six months to save a little bit of money, you can set up a savings category and YNAB will help you set aside a specific amount of money every single month. That way, when that auto insurance prepayment comes due, you can completely cover it with no problem. Now, even though YNAB focuses primarily on that budgeting experience, there are a couple of extra features, including a net worth tracker and an age of money report, which essentially lets you know how many days on average is money staying in your account after coming in and before it gets spent. If YNAB at all interests you, I'd highly recommend trying out that 34 day free trial. It gives you plenty of time to test out all of the features and see if you actually end up saving money. Now, all of these features sound great, right? Well, we need to talk about the safety and security of directly linking your bank accounts to these third-party apps like the three that we covered in this video. Every dollar in YNAB use a third-party service called Plaid to facilitate a secure connection between the bank itself and the app. Plaid is widely used and trusted by many large fintech companies like Robinhood, Venmo, and Chime, for example, but I understand that some people are still gonna be uncomfortable sharing their transaction and balance data with these third-party apps, which is why it's really great that every dollar in YNAB fully support the use of manually entering transaction and balance data. When linking an account to Mint, it works a little bit different than YNAB and EveryDollar. Instead of using Plaid, you either directly enter your bank login information on Mint, or you're actually directed to your bank login page, where you then enter your login info. It's pretty cool though, because with large banks like Chase, they'll actually substitute your real account numbers with fake ones to even better protect your data. Anyway though, each app uses bank level encryption and best safety practices to protect your information. If you're looking for specifics on this though, you can visit the website of each app and it dives into detail there. Thank you for watching. Make sure to leave any questions or comments down below and cheers to a financially successful 2023.